introducing Dr. Bell, uh, who created Dominion, and uh, it's it looks amazing. Just watch. I watched the video. Uh, I want to say about a week ago, and I immediately reached out because I was like, "Wow, this is uh, pretty amazing stuff." And uh, this will be our first program where we highlight specifically a creator, a publisher, the whole deal. So I hope to continue doing more of these. This is the whole reason that Comic Arts exists. So as we go forward, but yeah, Dr. Bell, this is a great great opportunity for me to just meet a, a publisher who's who's still working on books, who's worked on books in the past, and is hungry to just keep making and creating. So this is your platform to talk about your content and what you're pushing out in the world. So uh, without further ado, I'm just Joe Tolliver, but you're the man of the hour. Get after it, and uh, let's talk hey, about Hey, what's up? Thank you for, yeah, for having me, Joe. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for waking up early. And oh, yeah. <laughs> man, I, I do appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to talk about uh, the Dominion and, and everything that we're doing uh, at Terminus Media. All right. Awesome. Yeah, great. Let's, uh, let's talk about um, what's coming up for you specifically, what you're doing with Dominion right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dominion is pretty much a, the, the way I, I, I usually tell it, is it's Star Wars meets the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> it's yeah. just uh, really, uh, in, a, in a simplified version, it's Space Lions. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, um, I always um, had a love for, um, you know, just kind of like epics, you know, and, and especially space opera for some reason. I don't know if we're, it just kind of like sunk into me after I watched Star Wars. It just never left me. Um, but uh, you know, to be able to tell my own type of story uh, in a vast sweeping uh, kind of way to kind of re just build a world or a universe. Um, and I kind of, uh, you know, I'm a Christian, so I love the Bible. And uh, there are stories um, that have been told and retold and tread and retread. And, you know, when I when I was deciding to work on another project after uh, my, my last project, Radio Free America, um, I was like, well, what, what, what hasn't been done yet? And so I'm like, okay, well, there's stories that have been told, but they haven't been told like this. And so, yeah. you know, um, you know, I, I love Game of Thrones and, and all those kind of Arthurian type tales. So I'm like, man, why don't you you do something like that, but it put it in its space? Um, you know, so one of my favorite stories from the Bible was the story of King Saul um, because it's so tragic. You know, it, it really is like a, an Arthurian Arthurian legend or, or or Shakespearean tale where it just ends in tragedy. <laughs> it's like, you know, everybody dies on the bed. You know, <laughs> in, yeah. in, a, in a Shakespeare uh, tragedy. So it's like, you know, I would love to tell a story like that where it's just like everybody dies at the end. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that that's kind of like what I did. But but I, I wanted to adapt it in a way where it's like, okay, man, you know, um, I love I love sci-fi and i love fantasy and um so yeah i was like yeah let me tell these stories you know everything that i love like uh, you know spaceships and mechs and and princes and princesses and kings who are flawed and big gigantic sweeping epic wars and all all sorts those are my that's my wheelhouse right there so awesome and you know one of the things that drew me uh literally to your piece is just the the craftsmanship of the different characters' faces. And I think that's a key part of storytelling. And sometimes, you know, one of the first things that will drive me away from content, even if it's a really good story, if the faces don't seem real and engaged, then uh, and, and unique. So that was one of the biggest things. I was saying, this guy's drawing lions, and <laughs> and and not only is it it's so cool that when you see the lion, like the queen looks older. Like you, you were able to age these characters appropriately. Like that was very cool to see. And I'm a huge fan of Narnia. I'm a huge fan of sci-fi. So like, you know, when, when, for instance, when like Mass Effect came out, it blew my mind. Cause I was like, okay, you just pulled stories from 007, you know, you pull stories from Blade Runner and you just mirrored it into a perfect story that was really fantastic. So I'm all about like new IPs that tell stories that are proven really good but they're sort of turned and twisted to fit that ip in a really new and fresh way and i think it's pretty cool like i'm just really kind of blown away i'm looking forward to seeing your book and and i think the biggest thing is 
you know, I didn't know who you were until I stumbled on you on Instagram. Or I think you might have followed me. And I was like, who's this guy? And I was like, this guy's <laughs> awesome. What are we doing? So, uh, uh, well, well, I thought you were awesome first. So, you know. I appreciate it. <laughs> but, um, you I'm know, just doing sketches on Instagram. I'm just throwing up sketches and hoping for the best. Uh, yeah, Instagram's yeah. a weird pickle to, to, to kind of figure out. Well, it is. It is. And and you mentioned um, the other uh, artistry. And, you know, one of the things that, that you know, uh, that, I want everybody to know is that I am an artist. I'm a professor, I'm a pr uh, professor of art and design at uh, Liberty University and at uh, George Fox University. Uh, and I've been doing um, traditional art and digital art for you know years. I mean, almost 20 years. I've been teaching for over 10 years in that in that space. Um, and you know, it's important for me. Um, as an artist to be very, very um, uh, accurate as far as uh, the human figure and, and the conveyance of the human figure is concerned. Um, and my Pinterest board is crazy. I mean, you know, I tell all my students, it's like, man, if you're not on Pinterest, getting visual reference and building visual reference libraries, uh, you know, that's really kind of uh, the thing. And you mentioned um, the queen. I'm not sure if you can show my screen. Yeah, I'll let, me, let me get that up here. So um, the thing, the thing I I find very very important is when it comes down to see I'm creating anthropomorphs, you know, so I'm I'm mixing um, humans and animals, and it's, uh, the thing with Dominion is that um, I had to to strike a balance where there's like okay, there's enough human, but then there's enough animal, and where do I kind of enhance one or the other? Um, and one of the things that you mentioned is the, is the faces and the facial expressions and all that. To oh, me, yeah. it's very, very important uh, to create like a, an accurate representation of a male or a female and their appropriate age. Um, uh, this is the Queen Ahenoem. Uh, she's actually uh, a real person that existed uh, in the Bible, um, King Saul's wife. Um, okay. Very little bit of, is known about her, which was great for me as a writer because it gives me an opportunity to embellish history a little bit. Uh, but then again, I'm I'm taking it in into fantasy realms too. Uh, but these people, uh, Saul and Ahenoam, would be in their you know late thirties, early forties. Um, Ahenoam is around that that type of age period, and um, I had to make a decision as far as okay. You know, the male lions and the male animal characters, I wanted them to look masculine. So I wanted them to look more like their animal selves uh, with the muzzle and all that. But with the female characters, I wanted them to be more feminine. And when it, when you look at a lion, you can't tell what gender it is. I mean, you can tell, you know that the men, men the male lions have manes. They have gigantic mm -hmm. manes. And so you can say, okay, well, that's a lion. That's a lion. It's because she doesn't have a mane. But for me as an artist, that's not, you know, I needed to kind of like take it a little bit further into the human aspect of the anthropomorphism with the females. So I added full lips instead of just an undescript muzzle um, partition here for the mouth and that. I wanted to be able to show more femininity um, yep. in, in the design of the female characters. Um, yep. I, I did the same thing with um, uh, the, the daughter, Michael. So you'll be able to see that, okay, she, she is, she's a lion, but she's also a, a female, a woman. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a an artistic decision on my part to do that. Um, you'll see like um, uh, there's other books like Black Sad um, that does um, lions as well, or a lot, a lot of different um, animal characters. And they do even more human like female characters actually. So you-, you well, Let me interrupt you for a second, just because I have to pay a compliment here, mm -hmm. uh, just for like new artists and, and others what i just blows me away the drapery the control of the cloth the shadows here like you have realism but not hyper realism mm -hmm. it's almost like 
a digital version of watercolor with ink on top. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very nice. I, I very have nice to for younger artists. To, I, to, have to, I, I definitely have to give credit where credit is due. The the coloring in this is is not my color. It's actually okay. uh, my my colorist Chris Hunt. Okay. Um, because to tell you the truth, I mean, I I am a pretty good colorist, to, I, and and I can admit where where I'm not as good as other people. Um, I know that my pencils are excellent. I can say that. Um, my ink right. is okay. Yeah. I had to bring in an anchor, but my color is not as good as I would like it to be. So I brought in a colorist who had a sense of the traditional, and we talk about that all the time. And you know, on our website, we're going to be putting up um, process vlogs where we talk about the behind the scenes. We'll be doing one next week as well at terminusmedia.com. Um, but uh, I tell him all the time, I'm like, okay, I want to um, reference the masters and, and, and traditional artists when we look at our color design. So I talk about Vermeer, I talk about Caravaggio, um, I talk about Art Nouveau um, and, um, you know, uh, some of the, uh, like Alphonse Mucha, and you'll, you'll see that some of the line work um, definitely inspires me as, as, a, as an artist to, to in, influence my style as well. Can you, uh, at some point during this, I'd love to get a uh, link into your site. So just make sure that they know where they can find you as, uh, as people watch the show. And we'll, we'll plug it one more time before we close as well. But yeah, if you can absolutely you can work that in, yeah, that'd be great. And absolutely. You, so how big is your team right now that you have that, that works on your books? Uh, the mini team is three. It's uh, myself, um, Hunter Riggs, which is uh, my inker, and um, uh, Chris Hunt, which is my colorist. And uh, fun fact, uh, the two of them were at, uh, are current, one of them is current, one of my current students at George Fox University, and then the previous one is a previous student at Liberty University. And it's funny because you know, as a professor, you actually get to see the potential in your students. Yeah, and okay. those two students, I'm like, man, you know, there's something about them that speaks to me. And uh, the, the latent potential that I saw in them and then the, the actual ability for them to take critique, to listen, to meet deadlines, which is huge for oh, me. Yeah. Yep. To, and to answer their email. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, it's like, yep. you, you, I've worked with so many people where it's like, man, you know, please answer your email. Because if I'm, if I'm working on a deadline and you're not answering your email, that's a huge problem for me because it's costing me time, but it's also costing me money. So it's like, right. yeah, oh, I, yeah. Don't, I don't play when it comes to time and money. All right. Hey, let me, uh, let me bring up Steve Garcia. He's got a huge background and in, uh, in different avenues of, of media. Uh, smart guy. I've been working with him. Uh, for a little while, I mean, we've been, you know, Facebook and back and forth. I don't know if you call that working, but he's a big inspiration of mine. Said those eyes and uh, on that cat character filled with emotion, amazing storytelling in them alone. Beautiful. That was really, uh, thanks. I guess Steve. That was what got me entrapped in, in all of your, your storytelling. Cause I could see your, your story and your video, that introduction, you didn't even need to have words over it. You could have just had it. Of, of the characters and you saw everything. It was just really nice. Anyway, oh, yeah, I'm gushing yeah. over your work. Man. I'm gushing thank over your work a little bit. But thank, yeah, you, I just want, thank you so much. I want people to know it's there. And I think that's the biggest thing. People just don't. I didn't know you until we came across an Instagram. I think that's just the wrong answer. So let's just keep plugging away, getting you out there. Well, well yeah, I, I honestly appreciate it. Uh, especially now the comics industry is in, it's, it's on life support. It's, it, it's in red alert time, you know, and especially with um, Comic-Con being canceled and a lot of people's livelihoods are, you know, kind of connected to that and, and yeah. the, the comics industry right now um, to be able to do things like this as an artist is very, very important. And I'm glad, you know, what you have going on is so vitally important to, to artists um, who are trying to get their name out there. Um, and especially in the digital space now, we can take advantage of, of our self-quarantining and just kind of like really, you know, working on our trade, working on our craft, getting better and better, and just getting stuff out there. Oh yeah, and you know, we always have a chance to to work on ourselves every day. I tell that to new people, no matter what your craft is. Mm -hmm. um, That's what we're going to talk about at the roundtable this weekend. It's going to be a key part. Doesn't matter if you're into comics or whatever. 
find your passion, go out after it, and like and just own what it is that makes you happy. And if it's art, great. Then get after it. Be the best artist you can be. Be the Absolutely. best storyteller you can be. And then find Dr. Bell and other publishers who are ready to and willing to write stories and work with talented people who are busting their ass and hitting deadlines. That's Absolutely. really it. That's all it is. Absolutely. That's all it is. Yeah, man. Um, you know, we we um, are really, really working hard. Um, uh, our team. Um, yeah, I run a pretty tight ship, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I I expect excellence when it comes down to it. Here's a, another page that was recently uh, completed. Well, uh, this is an early version of, of, of a page. And, uh, you know, I'm um, you know, I'm I'm all about scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, for me, when it comes down to it, I want to convey um, Dominion as a uh, a large, a larger than life type entity. Um, and a lot of my my inspiration, because of the fact that uh, it it stems from these sections in the Bible, um, you will have a lot of kind of uh, Middle Eastern um, kind of inspired uh, shapes, designs, architecture. Um, yeah. And and some of that rich um, millennial history that you will see if you ever like looked at Egypt or um, uh, Petra or um, you know uh, Mecca Medina um, you know Israel uh, so it's like I draw from that a lot when it comes to my style the ships that I design um, for the Dominion um, I talk about <clears throat> in one of my um, process videos that we do. Um, I talk about how culture inspires shape and design um, and the, the culture that you establish for your fantasy um, or your, your sci-fi. Uh, I think you kind of need to think about that first before you go into design. Think about, um, you know, the, the lore of the world that you're trying to create. Think about the, the character um, profile before you actually develop a character because I think that the past informs the look of the present. And so, uh, you know, so I'm having all sorts of different cultures that I'm establishing that are based on real cultures in the past. So you'll have the, uh, the dominion, which um, I would say would mimic the uh, Israel, the, the history of the, the kingdom of Israel back in the Bible. Uh, they're, they're fighting the Philistines. And so they'll have their look. They're, they're also fighting the Amalekites. They'll have their look. And so uh, you'll see that the cultural differences, Dominion has curves. They're very kind of flu fluid, but the Amalekites, uh, they have hard edges and, um, uh, you know, every part of their armor would be considered like a weapon. So it's like, yeah, it, I'm having fun basically with this. Uh, my protagonists are going to be all mammals and the antagonists, the, the Philistines and the Amal Amalekites will be reptilian and, and amphibian. And so, you know, I think I'm playing off of some, some tropes, but you know, I'm having, well, fun, are you, I'm having fun with I, it. Let me see. Is that a, is that a trope or is that you got to be careful with the, uh, mm -hmm. how tight that is with, uh, what was it? I want to say Lion-O or whoever those characters were. The, uh, the Thundercats. Thundercats. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's the, not to get off on a, on a tangent or anything. We don't have a whole lot more time. But, yeah, that just wanted to plug that that remake that they made that only had one season. That was phenomenal. Oh, Great man. character design. And it I was really just like, It was like, why isn't anyone loving this? Like, what's wrong with you guys? Beautiful character designs. But, again, I think it's coming pretty clear that I'm a huge fan. I'm not, maybe I love something I'm not good at. So like, I'm pretty good at like sequential and fan art and all that sort of stuff. It's like um, covers, things like that. But when it comes to character design, it just blows my mind when I see people that are really good at it because character design, like, you know, it's not just the character, it's it's the environment, it's mm -hmm. everything. So like you build this lore up and what I love about your work is, yeah, you can you, you see that entire lore with just the queen alone. Like her presence, her body language, and everything, absolutely stunning. So, really good stuff. Um, so, I found you on Instagram. You are on Instagram as uh, Dominion uh, Comic, period. Yeah, comic? it's Dominion.comic on Instagram. Okay. All um, right. On uh, Twitter, it's Dominion Comic, all one word. On Facebook, okay. it's at Dominion Comic. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, I might reach out to you after this um, and see if I can get you on a show later on. 
Oh um, man, most deaf. Um, yeah, we, uh, or we write. Else. Oh no, I would love to do that. We right now have um, Dominion um, up for pre-order um, okay. on our website, terminusmedia.com, and um, our release date is going to be July the. I mean, not July, August the seventeenth, uh, for print and digital. Um, and so, yeah, I would love to come back on uh, right before we're, we're ready to drop and, um, you know, uh, have another discussion about uh, everything that we're doing. But, yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to just kind of stress with um, art and, and, and artists out there, it's like it's all about the details, man. It's all about the time that you put into something. You know, um, it's all about the research. Uh, when it came to the design uh, and I wanted my queen um, and you know my other characters as well, but you know, you have to kind of know who your character is before you design them. I really went into, and and you talking about character design. The part of character design is figuring out who your character is before you design them. I said, okay, I don't know much about Ahenoam. They don't cover her very much in the biblical pack in the biblical text. So I have to kind of have her inspired by someone. So I said, well, I'm going to have her inspired by Queen Nefertiti. Um, everybody know who, uh, if you're a historian of, of some you know, measure, you know that Nefertiti is one of the most iconic, iconic figures in Egyptian history. They have a bust of her, she was beautiful, um, but a lot of people don't know that she was the de facto ruler of Egypt at the time when her uh, king, her, her husband, uh, uh, Akhenaten, was pharaoh, but he was a little, a little cuckoo. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so she had to kind of pick up the slack and do a whole lot of things. And you can see her in some Egyptian reliefs and, and, and um, frescoes basically doing the things that a pharaoh would do. And in my story, it's the same thing. King Saul is going a little cuckoo. He lost the favor of God and he started to get these debilitating headaches. And so a Hanawim would basically do everything that a king would do except for be called king. And so I wanted her look to be like that. So I have um, a, a very kind of a detailed um, uh, look for her, very regal. I, I draw in from uh, Art Nouveau, but I also draw in from Art Deco in her mm -hmm. look and her design. Um, but she has to exude regality. And that's really what I wanted with her. Well, it's it's doing exactly your intention. Um, we got a question from uh, one of the people watching. So Steve Steve Vance asks, is Dr. Bell going to promote at shows once this Corona thing is done with? Yeah, um, as much as I possibly can, given my schedule. Uh, I am a college professor, too, so I do have those responsibilities. But, um, uh, you know, as Dominion grows and as Terminus grows, my publisher, um, we definitely want to have more time dedicated to doing shows. Um, I'll, I'll also probably be doing lectures as well as far as character design is concerned or just uh, creating um, allegory um, into, uh, into sci-fi and, and um, uh, fantasy and things of that nature. So that is part of the, part of the plan. Um, so I want to kind of backstory you a little bit, uh, kind of pick at your character a little bit. So, a lot of people think about doing this. A lot of people kind of sketch every other weekend or whatever. You've decided that this is going to be something that is a main part of your life. Um, when did that decision happen? And how did you uh, go about deciding to make action other than just thinking about it? That happened very early on in my life um, when I fell in love with comics. <laughs> uh, if, uh, just a fun fact, I fell in love with comics in uh, X-Men uh, Mark Silvestri days. So uh, so that is kind of like my, my gateway drug <laughs> of choice, <laughs> gateway comic of choice. And so ever since then, I kind of knew I wanted to do it. Um, I went to school for film and animation. Um, and um, when I graduated um, back in 2000 or 1999, um, I made a decision that I really wanted to go into a full time uh, into animation and to comic design. I went to Hollywood and tried to sell an animated TV series. And, and then I just kind of fell into comics that way uh, with my very first book. Um, but, you know, comics didn't make a lot of money for me. So I had to also teach. And so 
I made that decision that teaching and comics were kind of go tandem in my life. And so that's what I've been doing ever since. It's a crazy ride. How did you, now you talked about your team. I think uh, it's one of the biggest things about knowing yourself and knowing what you can do or what you can't do. Uh, well, you, you can find people that are better than you. So obviously at Comic Arts, it's all about building a team that uh, we've got people, like I'm not a graphic designer, we've got some great graphic designers, mm -hmm. and we're building this platform for you for, for everybody who's out there. Um, as a as a comic leader, as somebody who's leading that team, writing your script, everything else, um, and you're, you're, you're building a team around you, um, how, when you decided on those guys, yeah, you, you saw their their work, but one of the things that you're talking about is, hey, are they hitting deadlines? Mm -hmm. um, so you saw all that sort of stuff. What are you looking for for new artists that are like fresh but are hungry? Mm -hmm. And uh, how are you mentoring them through finished content? Or are you basically like, hey, here's your shot. You mm -hmm. hit it or you miss it. I'm going to move on to the next guy. Like, how are you well, deciding to lead that ship? That, that kind of is the thing, though. Joe, I mean, you know, you, you, you really do get only one chance to make a, a first impression. And yeah. for me, um, you know, that's why teaching is so valuable for me because I can actually see, uh, uh, is, my, uh, is this student um, uh, meeting the deadline when I say, okay, you're great, your, your assignment is due on this date. Do you hand it in like right under the, the, the finish line, right at the finish line, mm -hmm. or are you done a well before? And so I was able to kind of ascertain that, you know, Hunter was one of those kids who I never had to ask him for anything. He would just hand things in well before the, the time limit. The same thing with Chris Hunt. They would hand things in. And I'm like, okay, if I ever, and I, I would make a mental note when I saw that, if I ever was going to do a project, I want that person on the project and I want that person on the project. Not only is there, listen, you could be as talented as Michelangelo, but if you never meet deadlines, it doesn't matter. It's like you, it, it falls into a hole. And so for me, it was very important to have people who had the talent, number one, had the hunger. So when, when you're hungry, no one has to tell you to do anything. You just do it. And those are things that I need to see. Ambition. I need you to be a self-starter. I need to know that you practice because that's, hey, listen, I still practice. And the thing is, I'm humble enough to admit when I'm wrong. I'm humble enough to admit when I don't know something. I'm humble enough to say, okay, listen, I need help. That's another thing, knowing when, you, when, knowing when to ask for help. And these are the things that go a long way with me as a creative, as a leader, as a potential employer. These are things that I need to see in artists. What is your professional level? What is your hunger level? Excellent. And I think that's a good, that's just a good message for all creators. Like you have to, you have to show willingness, power, passion, uh, and technique. Um, and you got to be able to do it on a timeline that's not yours. So it's not when you feel like waking up and drawing that day and drawing something really great, you got to be able to be consistent. It may not be, you know, the best drawing you ever did, but you need to do something that is consistently solid that other people will want to market and, and use. And, and you got to be able to tell stories. So exactly. those are great things for all comic creators out there, everyone who's looking for comic creators. Now, let me ask you a controversial question a little bit. Absolutely. Um, so it's always comes down to this. Um, I've seen a lot of teams grow and break very quickly. I've seen people just basically say F off to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, creators getting really angry about this. What do you think about building teams based on exposure? Uh, because not everyone has a solid paycheck to be able to push content out. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do you lean on that as far as when is a good time to work for learning and when is a bad time? And when is the time to kind of pull the plug on, on something like that? Hey, you know, I've worked for a little bit of exposure. I've worked because I got to work on a skill set. But no, I don't do that anymore. Now you will pay. Like, how does that how does that work as somebody who um, is building a team and, and pays for a team? I mean, I, I think it, 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 it. I don't have a hard and fast rule when it comes to. I think you just have to feel it out. You yeah. just you you have to feel it out. Um, you know, I I have done many projects and I've worked on many in in, in many teams. And one of the things that I've learned over the over my time, I'm a little gray, so I've I've had a little track record, so I kind of know that 
when it's not no, number one, when it's not making money, it's time to go. Number two, when it's not fun anymore, it's time to go. Um, when I am sacrificing really, really good time that I could be spend doing other things or spending time with my family. Yeah. That's when I know that it's not productive. I have to feel like it's productive either, either at some point I'm still, um, um, like you said, mentoring and growing artists or whatever in that way. And I'm putting time toward that. That's value. That's equity. Uh, if, mm -hmm. if I'm not, uh, if at a certain point you, you should know, um, by the time you know you you do something and you release it and it's if it, if it's getting traction that's good if it's not getting traction either you have to pull back and figure something else out how to retool or you have to f or you have to change the project and move on to something else but it's ultimately about establishing a value system and sticking to it my value system is my family comes first my faith my faith comes first and then my family comes second and then my work so if I can make everything work within that and be successful, then I'm good. If any of those start to falter and you know when it's faltering because you start getting into arguments at home or whatever, that means that you're not spending enough time with your family. Things have to balance. I do believe that success can be attained. Even monetary success can be attained when there's balance. Yeah. And so you have to figure that out for yourself though. But if you're, if you're, um, you know, putting time into something and it's not be being profitable to you in some way, bringing some type of equity into your life, it's time to pull the plug. It's time to move on to something else, even, when, even when it comes to teams. Yeah. So uh, just a rehash of some of the things that we talked about. So we talked about finding that balance uh, for success, just knowing your balance. What is your priorities and, 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 and lay that out. Uh, we talked about uh, building teams, understanding what creators are looking for for their teams. Um, as far as success, as far as you know, uh, overall draftsmanship, creativity, deadlines. We hit all that those things. So if you're, you know, this is Facebook, so we know hey, people are are jumping around on the video. If you want to have an idea of what Dr. Bell is looking for, he's a perfect example of somebody who say, hey, I have a story, I have an idea, I'm going to drive through it. It's going to get finished and he's going to get pushed out. So, you know, he's a perfect example of, of other creators who are looking for to hire um, artists as potentially uh, anchors, colorists. And you, you talked about your anchor and colors. Um, so one last time, I just wanted to, to, to close up the show a little bit, give you a uh, uh, time here to do one more plug on the book where it's going to be found. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we'll do the we'll do a trailer out because this trailer is just too cool not to show one more time. Yeah, um, this is my website terminusmedia.com. Uh, it's a small press publisher in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and yeah, uh, we're putting out Dominion right now. We have another book called Ascension that's coming out, but Dominion is the first book, uh, and the website uh, is cool because we also have a uh, the process, which is kind of like the behind the scenes of. Awesome. Terminus Media uh, of uh, Dominion. And uh, I put out a vlog um, starting Wednesdays where uh, it's a video, um, probably like 10 minutes, up to 10 minutes in length, where I just kind of talk about the behind the scenes process of how I create things and how we create characters or how we, uh, you know, uh, talk about the, the story development. Um, uh, we're going to be talking this week about, um, you know, how to. Um, you know, merge uh, 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 allegory with um, uh, with history. So, we're, you know, how how am I extracting this portion of history and creating it into the sci-fi allegory? You also have a time lapse video. I think we talked about that. There's some things you can't show. Some things I think you're allowed to show. Uh, do you have a, a time lapse on there that maybe? Yeah, I I do. Uh, let's make sure. <laughs> kind of a last <laughs> second sort of pull here. I know we kind of talked about it before the show. I love those nice digital inks. Those are pretty. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Oops. Sorry, I had it queued up, but oh no. Oh uh, man. Um, <laughs> hold on a second. No, no uh, worries. I can no I can worries. go to my Twitter. Here, I'll give you I'll give you a free screen so you don't have to have everything up. Well, let me. Yeah, I'll see. So basically, uh, on my Twitter, I do I do that too. I I always kind of want to share my stuff. Uh, yeah. Let's see, um, so uh, I do time lapse, and I do call, I call it one minute design. Um, okay. Where if you kind of see, 
I don't know if you can see here. Okay, where, yeah, we got it. So basically it just shows in one minute how the design comes together and kind of drawing from Pinterest and uh, other things. Okay, how building a library. Together. Yeah, Pinterest, Pinterest, yeah. Pinterest. Here, here, here's my, my uh, you, you're, so to be clear, you know, I think one of the things, and this is a nice turnaround here as we watch it, um, you know, what, how do you keep yourself from being static with your references? So a lot of people reference and it's basically, it's the image with, you know, Wonder Woman's, you know, pieces put on. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you keep yourself from getting glued to the reference instead of just being inspired by it? Um, you don't, you, you have to, you don't copy, you embellish, you, 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 you are influenced by the design, but I'll say, okay, the thing that I'm taking from this one image is just the general shape of it, yeah. but the, 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 the detail work on the inside of the image, I'll, I'll, I'll turn that image off and then I'll, start to kind of embellish it based on my own ideas. So uh, in general, I, I like to reference shape. I represent uh, reference color. Um, I, rep I reference texture, but then all of the detail work is on me. Well, I gotta say, I gotta, I could probably talk with you for, for hours and we'll probably, <laughs> I'll probably pick your brain about trying to get on another show after this. Um, yeah, we'll definitely do that. This has been a great opportunity to talk with you. I think we'll do more shows like this. I think it's perfect to have you on as the first guest. You oh, really man, have. Thank you so you know, much. I appreciate you're well that. Organized. I think one of the great things about a leader is somebody who's good in good in multiple areas. And then they can say, Hey, you know, I need somebody who's a little bit better for this, but I'm good enough to know I'm not the best one. Let's go find somebody else. Who's just a superstar at it. That's so right. you got yourself a great team. I hope the best for you. We'll, uh, we'll chat more. Um, I'm going to pull up the video here of uh dominion one more time just because it's cool we'll, we'll, we'll close the show off on that uh, but if you have anything else you wanted to, to plug real quick yeah. yeah i mean um you know just just really um i want i want the artists to know out there it's like don't give up man if you have a dream man don't i mean everyone will tell you no but it's 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 on you whether to believe them or not so you know, you're your own advocate you're your own cheerleader so just keep practicing practice, 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 and just never say no, never take no for an answer. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's uh, Welcome. close up the show on this, on this wonderful, uh, uh, on this wonderful video on Dominion. And uh, I'll just gush as a, as a fan real quick on the way out. August 17th, we'll August on. 17th. <laughs> Available now for pre-order. Yeah. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I love these these uh, the the character the just the designs of those ships. Yeah, man. I I wanted to not retool or retrace other sci-fi steps. I wanted to just make something brand new. Yeah, I mean that that suit alone. Yeah, you could definitely kind of tell that could have been influenced by Halo if you weren't to if you weren't you know careful about it. Like that was really nice. It's kind of like mixing genres when it comes to these things. Yeah. Everything. That's my art deco. <laughs> Ultimately, bad. Dominion is about war, but it's also about fame. The throne, I would say, is kind of Games of Thrones. -ish. Sorry. <laughs> it's a king. Wait, what can you do? Kind of like my Iron Throne. Nice. Dominion is the story of the fall of the House of Saul. All right. Awesome. Thank you again. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks for being up with me. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> of course, I'm going to have freaking <laughs> shots.